One of the things that economists are interested in is the optimal level of consumption of goods and services by individuals. The choice of consumption is based upon two factors, tastes and preferences of the individual derived from their utility gained by the individual and the individual's income. Let's see how an economist views the process of choosing the optimal level of consumption for an individual for a given level of income. The rule for finding the optimal level of consumption for an individual is to find the amount of each good where the marginal utility of the good divided by the price is equal to the marginal utility of all the other goods divided by the prices of all the other goods subject to the um, person's income. The formula for calculating the consumer optimum is the marginal utility of the first good divided by the price of the first good which needs to be equal to the marginal utility of the second good divided by the price of the second good which is equal to the marginal utility of the third good divided by the price of the third good which is equal to the marginal utility of the nth good divided by the price of the nth good. Before looking at a, an example of this model, let's look at the, assumption, the assumptions of the model. There are four assumptions for the model. Individual consumes only two goods. This assumption is mainly because the example is short and we don't want to take too much time to work through it. The reasoning of the example, however, can be extended to any number of goods and services. Two, the individual gains utility from the consumption of one of the two goods. This assumption makes sure that the person's choice of goods provide benefit to the individual. The individual earns a fixed income. This assumption limits the amount of goods that the individual can purchase. This assumption should not limit the outcome of the analysis since most of us receive roughly the same amount of income in a given period of time. Four, the individual cannot borrow money to increase consumption, nor does the individual have any savings to buy extra product with. The procedure for finding the con consumer optimal level of consumption is Calculate the marginal utility for the first good. Calculate the marginal utility for the second good. Divide the marginal utility of the first good by the price of the first good. Divide the marginal utility of the second good by the price of the second good. Locate the place where the marginal utility of the first good divided by the price of the first good is equal to the marginal utility of the second good divided by the price of the second good. Six, multiply the price of each good times the amount of each good consumed by the individual. Add the total spent on each good together. Verify that the individual's income is totally spent on the goods and the individual has not overspent. Suppose Colleen likes both pizza and DVDs and she wants to consume as much as possible of both. She earns $26 and decides to spend it all on pizza or DVDs. The price of a DVD is $5 and the slice of pizza costs $3. Colleen wants to know what is her optimal consumption of DVDs and pizza slices. The first step in the process is to calculate the marginal utility of each of the goods. Let's start by calculating the marginal utility of DVDs for Colleen. Our table consists of the number of DVDs, the total utility gained from consuming a given number of DVDs, and the marginal utility of consuming the DVDs. Notice that we need to calculate the marginal utility. As you may remember from the video on marginal utility, that to calculate the 
utility, marginal utility, there are two levels of consumption and two levels of utility necessary to find it. Since the first row has only one value to work with, NA will be placed into the table into the first row indicating that we do not have enough information to do the calculation. Next, write down the formula for the marginal utility, substitute the values into the formula. In this case, TU2 is 50, TU1 is 0, C2 is 1, C1 is 0. Next, do the subtractions, which give 50 in the numerator on the top and 1 in the denominator on the bottom. So divide the numerator, or the number on the top, 50, by the denominator, the bottom number, 1, which is equal to 50. Place 50 into the second row of the Marshall Utility column. Next, write down the formula for the Marshall Utility. This time we're going to substitute the values in one row down. So we're going to substitute in for TU2, 95, TU1 is 50, C2 is 2, C1 is 1. Next we'll do the subtractions which gives 45 in the numerator, the top number, and 1 in the denominator, the bottom number. Divide the numerator, the top number, 45 by the denominator, the bottom number, 1 which is equal to 45. We're going to put 45 into the third row of the utility column. Next, write down the formula for calculating the Martian utility. Substitute the values into the formula. In this case, TU2 is 135, TU1 is 95, C2 is 3, C1 is 2. Next, do the subtractions, which gives 40 in the numerator, the top number, and 1 in the denominator, the bottom number. Then divide the numerator, the top number, 40, by the denominator, the bottom number, 1, which is equal to 40. Place 40 into the fourth row of the table of the utility column. Next, write down the formula for the marginal utility. Substitute the values into the formula. In this case, TU2 is 171.5, TU1 is 135, C2 is 4, C1 is 3. Next, do the subtractions, which gives 36.5 in the numerator, the top number, and 1 in the denominator, the bottom number. Divide the numerator, 36.5, by the denominator, 1, which is equal to 36.5. Place 36.5 in the fifth row of the marginal utility column. Write down the formula for the marginal utility. Substitute in the values into the formula. In this case, TU2 is 200, TU1 is 171.5, C2 is 5, and C1 is 4. Next, do the subtractions, which gives 28.5 in the numerator, 1 in the denominator. Divide the numerator, top number, or 28.5 by the denominator, the bottom number, 1, which is equal to 28.5. Place 28.5 in the sixth row of the marginal utility column. Next, we need to calculate the marginal utility for pizza. As you may remember from the video on marginal utility, that in order to calculate the marginal utility, there needs to be two levels of consumption and two levels of total utility. Since the first row has only one value to work with, NA will be placed into the table into the first row of the utility column. Write down, next let's write down the formula for the marginal utility, substitute the values into the formula. 
In this case, TU2 is 25, TU1 is 0, C2 is 1, and C1 is 0. Next, do the subtractions, which gives 25 in the numerator, the top number, 1 in the denominator, the bottom number, and divide the numerator, 25, by the denominator, 1, which is equal to 25. And we'll put 25 into the second row of the marginal utility column. Next, write down the formula for the marginal utility. Substitute the values into the formula. In this case, TU2 is 47, TU1 is 25, C2 is, one, is 2, and C1 is 1. Next, do the subtractions, which gives 22 in the numerator, the top number, and 1 in the denominator, the bottom number. Divide the numerator, 22, by the denominator, 1, which is equal to 22. Place 22 into the third row of the utility column. Next, write down the formula for the marginal utility. Substitute in the values for the formula. In this case, TU2 is 65, TU1 is 47, C2 is 3, and C1 is 2. Next, do the subtractions, which gives 18 in the numerator, the top number, and 1 in the denominator, the bottom number. Divide the numerator, 18, by the denominator, 1, which is equal to 18. Place 18 into the fourth row of the table of the marginal utility column. Next, write down the formula for the marginal utility. Substitute the values into the formula. In this case, TU2 is 80. TU1 is 65, C2 is 4, and C1 is 3. Next, do the subtractions, which gives 15 in the numerator, the top number, and 1 in the denominator, the bottom number. Divide the numerator, 15, by the denominator, 1, which is equal to 1. Put 15 into the fifth row of the marginal utility column. Next, write down the formula for the marginal utility. Substitute the values into the formula. In this case, TU2 is 89, TU1 is 80, C2 is 5, C1 is 4. Next, do the subtractions, which gives 9 in the numerator, the top number, and 1 in the denominator, the bottom number. Divide the numerator, 9, by the denominator, 1, which is equal to 9, and place 9 into the sixth row of the marginal utility column. Next, the marginal utility is going to be divided by the price needs to be calculated. In the first row of the marginal utility column, there is no marginal utility because it cannot be calculated with the information given. As a result, the first row of the marginal utility column is, um, cannot be calculated, so we put NA into it. The second row has a marginal utility that can be calculated. So the formula that we're going to use to calculate the marginal utility divided by the price is the marginal utility divided by the price of DVDs. The marginal utility in the second row is 50 and the price is $5. So dividing 50 by 5 gives 10. 10 is placed into the second row of the table. The third row as a marginal utility so it can be calculated. The formula is the marginal utility divided by the price. The marginal utility in the second row is 45 and the price is $5 so 45 divided by 5 is 9. 9 is placed in the second 
in the third row of the table. And the fourth row of table also has a marginal utility that can, so it can be calculated. The formula is the marginal utility divided by the price. The marginal utility in the second or in the fourth row is 40 and the price is five dollars. Dividing 40 by 5 is 8. 8 is placed into the fourth row of the table. The fifth row also has a marginal utility, so we can calculate the marginal utility divided by the price of the DVD. The formula is the marginal utility divided by price. The marginal utility of the fifth row is 36.5 and the price is $5, so dividing 36.5 by 5 gives 7.3. 7.3 is placed in the fifth row of the table. The sixth row of the table also has a marginal utility, so we can calculate the marginal utility divided by price. The formula is the marginal utility divided by price. The marginal utility in the sixth row is 28.5 and the price is $5. Dividing 28.5 by 5 is 5.7. 5.7 is placed in the fifth row of the table. Next, the process needs to be repeated for the pizza. The first row of the marginal utility com column, there is no marginal utility because it could not be calculated from the information given. As a result, the first row of the marginal utility column divided by price column cannot be calculated, so NA is put there to indicate that it can't be calculated. The second row has a marginal utility, so it can be calculated. The formula is the marginal utility divided by the price. The marginal utility in the second row is 25 and the price is $3. So dividing 25 by 3 is 3.8. 3.8 is placed in the second row of the table. The third row has a marginal utility in it, so the marginal utility divided by price of pizza can be calculated. The formula is the marginal utility divided by the price of the pizza. The marginal utility in the second row is 22, and the third row is 22, and the price is $3. Dividing 22 by 3 is 7.3. 7.3 is placed into the third row of the table. The fourth table has a marginal utility, so we can calculate the marginal utili utility divided by price. The formula is the marginal utility divided by price. The marginal utility in the fourth row is 18 and the price is $3. Dividing 18 by 3 is 6. 6 is placed in the fourth row of the table. The fifth row has a marginal utility in it, so we can calculate the marginal utility divided by the price of the pizza. The formula is the marginal utility divided by the price of pizza. The marginal utility of the second row is 15, and the price of the pizza is $3. Dividing 15 by 3 is 5. 5 is placed in the fifth row of the table. The sixth row has a marginal utility in it, so we can calculate the marginal utility divided by the price of pizza. The formula is the marginal utility divided by the price of the pizza. The marginal utility in the second row is 9 and the price is 3. Dividing 9 by 3 is 3. 3 is placed in the fifth row. The next step is to combine the, the table with the marginal utility of the DVD divided by the price and the marginal utility of pizza divided by the price. Remember that the optimal level of consumption will occur where the marginal utility of DVDs divided by the price of DVDs equals the marginal utility of pizzas divided by the price of pizza. The marginal utility of DVDs divided by the price of DVDs is found in the column labeled DVD MU divided by dollar sign. The marginal utility of pizza divided by the price of a pizza is found in the column labeled pizza MU divided by dollar sign.
The second row of the table is skipped because there is no data for DVD MU divided by dollar sign and pizza MU divided by dollar sign. Now moving down to the third row, DVD MU divided by dollar sign is 10 and pizza divided MU divided by dollar sign is 8.3. Since 10 is not equal to 8.3, Colleen will not choose to consume at this point. Moving down to the M pizza MU by, by dollar sign column, the DVD MU is 10 and the pizza MU dollar si divided by dollar sign is 7.3. Since 10 is not equal to 7.3, Colleen will not to choose to consume at this point. Moving down the pizza MU divided by dollar sign column, DVD MU divided by dollar sign is 10, the pizza MU divided by dollar sign is 6. Since 10 is not equal to 6, Colleen will choose not to consume at this point. Moving down the pizza MU divided by dollar sign column, column DVD MU divided by dollar sign is 10. The pizza MU divided by dollar sign is 5. And since 10 is not equal to 5, Colleen will choose not to consume at this point. Moving down the pizza MU divided by dollar sign column, column, the DVD MU divided by dollar sign is 10, and the pizza MU divided by dollar sign is 3. Since 10 is not equal to 3, Colleen will choose not to consume at this point. Moving one row down on the DVD MU divided by dollar sign, the DVD MU divided by dollar sign is 9, and the pizza MU divided by dollar sign is 8.3. Since 9 is not equal to 8.3, Colleen will choose not to consume at this point. Moving one, moving one row down the pizza MU slash dollar sign column, the DVD MU divided by dollar sign is 9, and the pizza MU divided by dollar sign is 7.3. Since 9 is not equal to 7.3, Colleen will choose not to consume at this point. Moving one row down the pizza MU divided by dollar sign column, the DVD MU divided by dollar sign is 9, and the pizza MU divided by dollar sign is 6. And since 9 is not equal to 6, Colleen will choose not to consume at this point. Moving down the pizza MU divided by dollar sign column, the DVD divided by dollar sign column is 9, and the pizza MU divided by dollar sign is 5. Since 9 is not equal to 5, Colleen will choose not to consume at this point. Moving down one row of the pizza MU divided by dollar sign column, the DVD MU divided by dollar sign is 9, and the pizza divided by MU dollar sign is 3. Since 9 is not equal to 3, Colleen will choose not to consume at this point. Moving down one row of the DVD MU divided by dollar sign column, the DVD MU divided by dollar sign is 8. Starting back at the top of the pizza MU divided by dollar sign col column, pizza MU, MU, MU divided by dollar sign is 8.3. Since 8 is not equal to 8.3, Colleen will not consume at this point. Moving 
down one row of the pizza MU divided by dollar sign column. The DVD MU divided by dollar, dollar sign is 8, and the pizza MU divided by dollar sign is 7.3. Since 8 is not equal to 7.3, Colleen will choose not to consume at this point. Moving down one row of the pizza MU divided by dollar sign column, the DVD MU divided by dollar sign is 8, and the pizza MU divided by dollar sign is equal to 6. Since 8 is not equal to 6, Colleen will choose not to consume at this point. Moving one row down, the pizza divided by MU divided by dollar sign column, the DVD MU divided by dollar sign is 8, and the pizza MU divided by dollar sign is 5. Since 8 is not equal to 6, Colleen will choose not to consume at this point. Moving down one row of the pizza MU divided by dollar sign column, the DVD MU divided by dollar sign is 8, and the pizza MU divided by dollar sign is 5. And since 8 is not equal to 5, Colleen will choose not to consume at this point. Moving one row down the pizza MU divided by dollar sign column, the DVD MU divided by dollar sign is 8, and the pizza MU divided by dollar sign is 3. Since 8 is not equal to 3, Colleen will choose not to consume at this point. Moving one row down the DVD MU divided by dollar sign column, the DVD MU divided by dollar sign is 7.3. Starting back at the top of the pizza MU divided by dollar sign column, the pizza MU divided by dollar sign is 8.3. Since 7.3 is not equal to 8.3, Colleen will choose not to consume at this point. Moving down one row of the pizza divided by MU dollar sign, the DVD MU divided by dollar sign is 7.3 and the pizza MU divided by dollar sign is 7.3. Since 7.3 representing the DVD MU divided by dollar sign is equal to 7.3 representing the pizza MU divided by dollar sign, Colleen has found the optimal level of consumption. Next she needs to find the amount of DVDs she will consume and the amount of pizza slices she will consume. First, she will be start by finding the amount of DVDs. She will start with the DVD MUs that maximize her utility, in this case, 7.3. Next, she will read across to the amount of DVDs at 7.3. The amount of DVDs that Colleen consumes when her M DVD MU by dollar sign is 7.3 is 4. So Colleen consumes 4 DVDs. Next, she will need to find the amount of pizza. She will start with the pizza with the MU dollar sign that maximizes her utility, 7.3. Next, she'll read across the amount of pizza at 7.3. The amount of pizza that Colleen consumes 
when her pizza MU divided by dollar sign is 7.3 is 2. So Colleen will consume four, four DVDs and two pizzas. However, we should make sure that Colleen is consuming within her income. The final step for Colleen is to make sure she doesn't overspend. She pays $5 for a DVD and buys four of them, which costs her a total of $20. She spends $3 for pizza and she buys two pizzas, which will cost her a total of $6. Total, Colleen's total expenditure is $20 plus $6 or $26, so her consumption is equal to her income, and she has found her optimal level of consumption of DVDs and pizzas.